You would be proud of your Sunman Fire shirt. That's why I wore it. I wore it for you. <laughs> My prize at the end. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. The day has finally arrived. It's surgery day and I couldn't be more nervous or more thrilled. It's been a long wait and a long time coming and the day's finally here. So let's get this started. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with this as we document this entire ACL injury and recovery process. Uh, we're going through everything from how the injury happened, what I did before surgery, the surgery itself, and all the post-surgery recovery process. So hit that subscribe button and keep up to date. So we started the day off driving to Lone Peak Hospital in Draper, Utah, and the nerves were really starting to kick in. I was getting super nervous as we were pulling out of our driveway and heading towards the highway. I was, you know, super excited at the same time, but I was also nervous because they're getting ready to cut me open and I really have never had that happen before and didn't really know what to expect and the butterflies were stirring definitely. Needed to be done. I needed to be able to get back out and you know regain normal movement and start my life again. So I'm tired of sitting around. It's not like me to just sit around and hang out and do nothing and I want to get out and enjoy Utah and everything that we moved out here for. So let's get the surgery started. Upon arriving at Lone Peak Hospital, we entered through the main entrance and we're met with the concierge at the front desk and they started all the paperwork. So the first thing we had to do was to go into a little room and meet with a guy. He started all the insurance paperwork, talked about payment, talked about the whole process of everything that's going through. And it was kind of super helpful. It made me feel a little better and made me kind of more aware of exactly what was going to happen throughout the day. It was nice that they did that. Completing all that paperwork, which took probably, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or so, uh, we moved to the waiting room and started the waiting process. We were only in the waiting room for maybe five minutes uh, when a nurse finally arrived and not finally when a nurse arrived and and came over to us and said you know hey are you keith and I said yep and she goes well i'm here to get you and she walked us back to my pre-op uh, staging room and oh man my my stomach was going nuts i was really scared and nervous and i was trying not to show it and trying to be brave and not worry Lindsay and not worrying myself more than I needed to, but my gut was going crazy and it was getting real, real quick. So we made it back to my pre-op room and first thing I had to do was get undressed and put on the lovely uh, hospital gown, which mine had kind of like a, a weird pattern that almost looked like digital camo. My dad was all excited because he thought it was digital camo when I sent him a picture, but it wasn't. It was just some weird pattern. There it was in my funky little foot socks for traction so I don't fall and my hospital gown and laying in a hospital bed and it's been a long long time since I've laid in a hospital bed. I used to actually work on and design hospital beds at a prior job so it was weird kind of you know being in a designer of a hospital bed and now actually using one of them. It was good it was comfortable and after I got settled in and kind of got set up the nurse stopped back a couple times to see if I needed anything had the tv running and watching something I think we're watching South Park or something on TV, which is kind of cool. I haven't seen South Park in a while, uh, ever since we dropped cable. And uh, just kind of we're killing time and the waiting process began. And I originally thought we were going to get into surgery early. Uh, we got into the hospital around 2, 2.30 in the afternoon. And the original surgery scheduled time was for 3.45. I thought, oh, good, you know, this is awesome. Like, we'll, we'll get in early and maybe we'll get out early. Eh, it didn't quite happen. You know, having surgery scheduled at the end of the day, it's not uncommon for other surgeries to get in the way and complications to come in and things to take longer than expected. So, of course, my surgery got pushed. And the waiting and waiting and waiting began. So finally at around 4, 4.30, something like that, I don't know. Time's a little blurry for me with the, the whole thing that went on that day. The anesthesiologist came in and started talking to me about what he was going to do, what type of anesthesia they were going to perform, and the fact that they were going to actually do a nerve blocker to my leg uh, prior to going into surgery. And they wanted to know if it was okay for them to do it in my room since the surgical room was still occupied. And I said, sure, why not? So they wheeled in a cart and an assistant came in to help the anesthesiologist and they began the uh, nerve blocking procedure. So at this point I was being wheeled off to my surgical room and I was just Glad to finally be moving and 
getting there and getting out of that pre-op room and getting done with the waiting process. And man, it just like flew by. You know, of course I was put under for the surgery, but I remember being wheeled back to the room and I remember kind of seeing the room and stuff. And one of the doctors that was going to be working on me, he came over and introduced himself and I must've looked like I was high as a kite, basically from the anesthesia that they had given me while they were doing the uh, nerve blocker procedure. The guy came over and looked at me and said, you know, hi, my name's Dr. So-and-so. And he was like, whoa, and he was looking at my eyes and my eyes must've been totally blown out. It was pretty funny. Then they, they laid me down on the actual surgical table and kind of got me p pulled over and stretched out. And it was one of those tables where the arms are kind of extended out. And I laid my arms out there so they could strap them down. And at that same time, they started um, administering the actual general anesthesia that was going to put me under. And I was only there for maybe, I don't know, 10 seconds or so. And I wanted to say, oh, can I scratch my head before you lock my arms down? And I didn't even get that out. And I was under and out. And the next thing I remember, I was back in my room. It's kind of crazy, but that's how it happened. So while I was in surgery, which lasted, I believe, for about an hour, it was supposed to last about 45 minutes, but there were some complications during the surgery. Uh, when they went in to replace my ACL, they realized that the, I had torn a large chunk of cartilage off of my knee that needed to be repaired. So they had to actually go in and dig out the chunk that was free floating my knee, which would have caused a lot of problems if they wouldn't have taken it out. So it's good they got that taken care of. But they dug the chunk out and then they found where it came from. They kind of talked about it like filling in a pothole. So first they had to grind off the area where the chunk had broke off and kind of get it nice and smooth. And then they drilled, I think, five or six holes into my knee to allow bone marrow to flow out to help rebuild a scar cartilage, which won't be as good as the original cartilage, but it'll fill in the area and prevent it from being bone on bone rubbing. So they didn't say that I would have any kind of major side effects from it. But I'm sure maybe down the line, you know, when I get older, there might be some impact to it. But that added complication caused the surgery to delay a little bit and take a little longer. So while I was in surgery, poor Lindsay had the job of waiting and waiting patiently. She was stuck out in the waiting room, not quite knowing what was going on. They did have the nice um, kind of patient signage board that shows, you know, what state uh, you're in in terms of the whole workflow of the surgery which was nice for her to be able to kind of see what was going on, but I'm sure she was nervous and pacing and wondering and very concerned because she's that type of person and, you know, wonderful. But um, she kind of checked out the hospital while she was there, got a couple cool shots of some of the artwork and different things that were there. And while I was in surgery, a big storm must have rolled through and dropped some hail and stuff, which is kind of unusual for the area. Thankfully, the power didn't go out or anything crazy like that. Eventually, that waiting all came to an end and I was wheeled out of surgery. So they brought Lindsay back to the room before I got wheeled back in so that she'd be there when I when I actually came in. And when I came in, I guess I was, I might have this off a little bit, but I think I was still under when I got rolled back into the room, but I came out of it fairly quickly, like five to 15 minutes later. And then I was freezing. I've never been so cold in my life. I was freezing, freezing cold. And I was like literally shivering and shaking in my bed. And I was all wrapped up in all these blankets and I was still shaking. So they went and got a couple more blankets that were nice and warm. And I finally was able to come out of the shivering phase and, and kind of keep my muscles from tensing up too much and get a little more comfortable. So laid in bed for a while, talked to Lindsay for a little while, you know, kind of got my bearings a little bit and then finally got the okay to leave the hospital and head out. Leaving the hospital was quite a challenge. You know, they wheeled me out as far as they could and then got me into a wheelchair which was a challenge in itself, just getting in the wheelchair. And then they wheeled me out to the car and Lindsay pulled right up to the front. And that's where I got my first shock of pain. I tried to lift myself from the wheelchair to the car and I accidentally put my foot down just ever so slightly, like literally just toes to the ground and oh man, it hurt. It hurt so bad. And the nurse even went, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. And she was right, but I had to, I got myself, I finally got myself in the car and Got everything situated and I was like, please just take me home. <laughs> I was in so much pain. I had not taken any of the opioids or narcotic yet at that point. I told him I'd get the prescription filled on the way home and then take it when we got home. Lindsay went through and took me back and got me situated in bed and got me back home. And then she went and filled the prescription. So after dealing with the prescription issues at the pharmacy and trying to get it filled because getting narcotics prescriptions filled can be somewhat of a pain. A couple hours went by and Lindsay finally got it and got everything she needed. 
by that time all the restaurants were closing and I hadn't eaten since like 10 o'clock the prior night. So I was getting pretty hungry. And by this time it was, uh, I don't know, after 10 o'clock at night. So I had went to surgery at two o'clock in the afternoon and now here it is 10 o'clock at night and I hadn't eaten yet and Lindsay hadn't really eaten yet. So we were dying for food and everything was closed around here. So we finally found some fast food and Lindsay worked her way back home and I ate and called it a night and was glad everything was done and glad that there were only minor complications and super glad to be back in my bed. So that wraps up my surgery day. Uh, all in all, everything went really well. Uh, the surgeon did a great job. You know, he fixed some problems that have been plaguing me forever. He took care of the ACL issue, took care of the cartilage issue, also did a patella release, which will hopefully allow me to hike without knee braces and potentially one day maybe even ski without knee braces, which would be super sweet. I hate wearing knee braces, they're so uncomfortable. So looking forward to a speedy recovery. Unfortunately, one of the drawbacks of the, the cartilage issue is that because they had to drill into my bone, that's gonna take some time to repair. So I'm looking at six weeks on crutches instead of the expected two to three weeks on crutches, which really sucks because that means that I'm not allowed to bear weight on that leg for six weeks. I'm gonna to have to use crutches for six weeks and it's gonna impact my rehabilitation, which means I'm only gonna be able to do limited rehabilitation exercises or, or physical therapy exercises until I can get off crutches. Well, thanks for watching this video. And if you liked it or found it informative or entertaining, uh, give us a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. it helps out our channel. And if you wanna follow along with the rest of this story, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell to stay notified so you don't miss out on anything. Um, now that surgery's finally over, we'll start documenting the whole rehab process which should be interesting. I'm sure it's going to be a, a wild ride. Until then, we'll catch you next time. See ya.